Hey everybody, welcome back to Selena's Corner. Um, I'm gonna do holiday cooking goodies today. Um, I hope everybody's enjoying their holiday, whether it's Christmas or Hanukkah, or I think Kwanzaa comes after Christmas, I'm not positive on that. But whatever you celebrate or don't celebrate, if you don't celebrate the holidays, that's fine too. But you can still make this stuff for yourself <laughs> or for your friend or whatever. Um, but anyway, I'm going to make seven dozen of everything today. And I'm going to do the stuff that takes the longest first. And that way we can get it out of the way. Um, the first thing I'm going to make is the um, <clears throat> Hershey Rollo Pecan Delight. If you don't like pecans, you can just top it with a pretzel instead of a pecan. But they taste just like turtles. So anyway, so you know I always give you guys some tips. So here are my tips for this. So this bag of Rolos, <laughs> they are wrapped. But what I found out is that even though it's kind of a pain to unwrap 84 Rolos, <laughs> I get more in a bag if I go ahead and just buy the wrap. So I just suck it up and buy the, the wrapped ones and <laughs> unwrap them for whatever it is I make. They're really good. It's hard not to eat them <laughs> as you're unwrapping them. It's like one for you, one for me. Yeah, <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> I'm also using um, Snyder's of Hanover mini pretzels today. And um, I sort through the pretzels and the pecan halves to make sure that I don't have any broken pieces. Um, because, you know, you want them to look nice. I mean, you might not care about that stuff, but I do. Um, I think the, the more uh, consideration you put into that sort of thing, the nicer your finished products look. So that's what I do. So I have, um, I think, a few more than 84 in here and a few more than 84 in here just for breakage purposes. Also, <clears throat> we need to preheat our oven to 250 and um, cover a baking sheet. This is a half sheet uh, pan that we use for uh, Joshua's uh, macaron video. And we also use this for the Thanksgiving video too. So um, anyway, so I've already put a parchment, piece of parchment paper on it. I just cut it to size so it stuff would slide around. Um, also, I have these um, these are from Wilton's. They're the candy melt pots. They melt chocolate and candy melts and chocolate chips and stuff like that. If you just need a few chocolate chips, um, I wouldn't drag this out for that. But a neat thing I found this year, I was thinking about making cookie pops. And uh, while I was looking for the stuff to make cookie pops with, um, I found this double-sided um, insert for the Wiltons and I thought oh that's great because I like to do like a little bit of the white candy melts like as accents and the chocolate candy melts as accents so what I could do is I can have I have two two of these pots so I can <coughs> I can have one pot with my decorative or decorative however you'd like to say it going in one pan and then my main um, candy melt or chocolate going in the other one. So <clears throat> we're going to use this to drizzle chocolate over the top of these and that's just something I'm going to add to it because uh, I just think it looks pretty. But um, this is almond bark and we use this um, to make our um, friendship cookies every year that we give away and sometimes um, Joshua wanted to make them when a friend of his mom passed away because these these cookies are just they're so delicious and you put them in your mouth and you're just like ah, this is so good um, if you're allergic to nuts you probably want to pass on this maybe I can think of a way to do maybe the cheese maybe I can come up with something to do with the cheese but what I'm going to do is I'm going to melt this almond bar in the big, the big candy melt pot while we're working on this 
so that I'll have it ready because that, that's the one I'm going to do next because it's another one that kind of takes a little while to do. And we usually do it as a team. One person will dip the, dip the cookies and put it out on the wax paper and the other person will count the sin and then they'll put the sprinkles on it. And you can put any kind of sprinkles you want to on it, but I'm just going to do a Christmas theme. We do celebrate Christmas, so I'm going to do a Christmas theme with that. So I'm just going to set the stuff that I don't need. There's some holiday sprinkles there. Um, or chocolate. Or any of these fancy fancies right here. Not just for weddings. I use them for Christmas. Then I've got some little um, sugar sprinkles that are nice. It looks good on like something in a deep color like uh, dark chocolate and stuff like that. I'm also going to make some snow caps. You know the snow caps? The dark chocolate with the white non pareils. Mm, they're so good. And so I'm going to show you a really simple way to make those. If you love those and you can't find them at the store, and they're really hard to find, um, I'm going to show you how to make your own so that you never have to worry about finding them in. So I'll put the scissors away. I don't know why I put the scissors away. But I knew I was going to need them. So, as always, if you like what you see today, be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment, be nice, and please share. I'm going to open this up right quick, and I'm going to get this going because it needs to melt now. In these uh, candy melting pots, the chocolate melting candy melt pots, whichever you want to call them, well, let's see what Wilton's called. Just one second. <laughs> okay. So Wilton's calls them candy melts. Candy melting pot. And it comes it comes with a, a good size, it holds a lot, <laughs> um, pot that's got silicone. And if you'll let it sit until it's cold, it just pops right out of there and you can reuse it. Um, and that's the, the, the little double pot that I found while I was uh, shopping the other day. And I'm like, ooh, I like that out there. Yep, that's fine. I put that out of the way. Okay, so what you do is you start it on high until it's melted and then you turn it down to low. And yes, you can temper chocolate in this. I have done it. You took a chocolate in the microwave too, but okay, so we're gonna turn it up to high. Let's put these in here. Now alternately, if you don't have something like this or you don't want to spend the money on something like this, that's fine. Don't have to. You can put it out of the pot here. And what I did is I took this and I banged it on the counter and broke it up before I um, Took it out to put it in the pot. And I'm making a mess over here. That's all I'm doing. So it won't all fit until it starts melting down. But I still have like three little blocks left. As it melts down, I'll put, I'll put in the rest of it. Alternately, what you can do is you can put, get a small pot. It doesn't have to be this small. It can be a little bit, I have a little bit bigger one than this. Um, I think it's a one quart. I have one quart and a two quart. Neither one work. But, you put, put water in here and then a bowl, a glass bowl on top of it. You don't want to use plastic because it will melt. Because <laughs> it's got to get hot enough to melt the, the almond bark or the, the chocolate chips or the, the chocolate melts, whatever it is, or the chocolate, whatever you're using. And you just, you just bring that water to a boil, turn it down to simmer. And then you're going to put your chocolate or whatever it is you're using in the bowl on top of it and you're just going to stir it until it melts and you want it on simmer because if you have it too high it's going to ruin your chocolate it will um yeah and you can't bring it back <laughs> people will say you can bring it back trust me you cannot bring it back once that chocolate has been overheated it's ruined so and don't do that i just got the stuff just to show you an alternative way now, we're also going to need some um, roast our um, 
pecan halves before we start, and I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to um, put these in there too. Get these going. You know, one half. No, I don't know what I'm going to decorate, what I'm not going to decorate today, so I'm just going to wing it. A lot of fun about um, creating things in the kitchen is just like make stuff up as you go along. Just like Josh said, just get in the kitchen and try it. I mean, heck, who do you got to lose? I like, I like creating things, especially the stuff you can eat or share. I made some Rice Krispie treats out of those marshmallows that I made. Uh, I had. Um, if I showed that to you guys, so give me a second and I'll grab them right quick and show you what I made. So I made many marshmallows and I did, um, that was the scraps from this. I mean, I cut out um, snowflake marshmallows out of the marshmallow mix that I made. And I, I made that in this pan too, so they would be kind of thin so that I could cut them up so um, you can float them on your hot chocolate. But I'm going to make some hot chocolate bombs, and I'm probably not going to be able to make them until tomorrow because um, my, um, <laughs> my chocolate molds are being held hostage in UPS purgatory right now. So... Nobody's getting their stuff right now, and I was supposed to get <laughs> my molds yesterday so I could demonstrate how to make those hot chocolate bombs for you for um, gifting or <laughs> just for yourself. And you can have hot chocolate bombs anytime. You know that as well as I do. Um, remember that coconut and the hazelnut that I used to make the coconut liqueur? Uh, coconut rum and the frangelico. You know, we're making candy for that today. <laughs> told you I was going to. I told you I was going to. So, back to our roll of pecan lights. So, we need to put this away. So, we need to roast our pecans first. And you have to be really careful when you roast nuts because they can burn quickly. So what you want to do is you just want to put them on the stove. You want to get this stuff out of there. And you want to put it on medium. A high medium. Finish my um, sugar, my vanilla sugar and my vanilla salt. I just put them in here. I get these at the Dollar Tree. I've already um, got all my um, extracts ready to go. Let's see. I'll show you some that I did. That's the eight pack. the four pack and I put a little note on the back of it telling them uh, which ones are perpetual all they got to do is just refill it and it can just keep going and going and going like the vanilla for instance and I've already given all but these two away but that was how um, I packaged um, the liqueurs that I made so I've given all but these two away and these are going soon too I just noticed that I spilled vanilla sugar all over my place now. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I thought I cleaned everything up before I started. My apologies. Oh, I gotta show you this. So <laughs> when I was in Venezuela, they taught me they taught me a lot of fun traditions. But if you crack open if you crack open an almond and it's got two in there, you give one to a friend or a family member 
and you guys make a wish and you make a bet and you say okay so I'll bet you pretend my son travels I'll bet you your Christmas candy that I say Merry Christmas first on Christmas morning and whoever says whoever does the bet first wins whatever it was that you bet so you make a wish and then you make the bet so <laughs> this right here is a nutcracker so last year I took the nutcracker out <laughs> of this bowl and uh, yeah so instead of holding it closed when I pulled it out I just pulled it out and nuts went everywhere so yeah I'm sure you would have liked to have had a video of that because it was hilarious and it was a mess <laughs> it took me a while to clean up all that stuff so I have learned my lesson and I hold it closed now okay so this is melting, melting down pretty good I think I can add the last two or three squares alright and it might help if I turn this one on Stick pan, you do not want to use a regular um, spoon in a non stick pan. Make sure you have a wooden spoon or something that's plastic. So, my right pan wants to be a baby. smell the pecans okay and be gentle because you don't want to break the pecans I think I already broke one but I threw some extras in here just in case just smell it every now and then I sort through my pecans too I look for broken ones or ones that might not be any good because I mean you know that's just how it is with nuts you know, they can all be 100%. You crack open a nut, it's not any good, you just throw it away. It's the same thing when you buy, buy the commercial stuff. I don't know about you, but I don't live anywhere, you know, where I can get pecans to sell myself. We used to do it when I lived, in, when I lived down in Florida growing up, because uh, we had a family that lived in Georgia, and they would send us tons and tons and tons of pecans, and we would sit and we would sell them. <laughs> Well, my grandma says she can make her fruit cake. And do you know, my grandma made fruit cake every single year and she always stashed it in her closet and she'd go in there and she'd pour her brandy or whatever it was she did. Never, ever have I tasted fruit cake. Never, it's that. Uh, candy fruit just never looked very good to me. So yeah, I never touched it. It's probably something that I should try and I just never have. I know when I worked at Winn-Dixie in that cheese shop, and we'd get, we'd get the Claxton fruitcakes, you know, the little square Claxton fruitcakes, and that stuff would fly off the shelves. <laughs> it would literally fly off the shelves. We could not keep that stuff in stock. Not quite. It just smells kind of, you know, kind of smell when they cook. That's what you're looking for. You're just looking for that nice, sweet, nutty aroma. Mm. What nuts? I feel bad for people who have nut allergies because boy, they sure are missing out. Makes me sad. Starting to smell something now. But you'll see it does not take long at all. You just want to keep them moving because you don't want them to burn. Even on medium heat, they'll burn. And like always, everything that I make today, I'll um, put a link 
in the description to um, the recipe so that if you wanted to make it, you can make it yourself too. Um, I don't know that I have a recipe for what we call the friendship cookies because I, I just got it verbally from a friend. We made them and we just been making them ever since. Like I said, we always did them on like a little assembly line. Right, I can smell those pecans. Okay, so once you get a smell of the pecans, I wish you two had had smell vision. Somebody's got to invent smell vision <laughs> because they smell really, really good. Ooh, these are melting down nice. Ouch! And be careful, don't burn yourself like I just did. <laughs> Three spoons out. Nice. That one, and one for that one. It doesn't take long. I'll just move it around a little bit. But like I said, once it all melts, I'll put it on low. salt on top. I don't know how many I can fit on here, but I'm going to try to fit as many as I can. So I only have to do it once and not twice. That's what's great about these big trays. They hold a lot. That's eight. about it for a long time in my head before I decide what it is I'm, I'm really gonna do. I'll just put it together and this is this is actually there's a broken one. These are actually gonna be neighbor gifts. Every year I try to think of a nice neighbor neighbor gift that I can do. I have a couple um, elderly neighbors and um, I noticed that during the holidays, nobody comes to visit. Doesn't seem like anybody comes to visit or bring them any food or anything. So I like to give. I like to give them food. My neighbor across the hall, um, the ones that trick or treated with us, they've got um, two children. Um, so. <clears throat> I like. I would like to give them something you know, for them to share, just so they know. You know, there's people out there that care about them. We're in the middle of a pandemic, so still, still. So we need to let we need to look after each other. We gotta have eat on every every row. Also, another 
another reason that you um, want to sort through your pretzels and your pecans is that uh, you get to eat the broken ones. Did I didn't tell you that? Oh, it's sort of better than that. <laughs> we have nine rows. These are broken ones. I'm just going to stun to the side for right now. Peanut okay, melt's coming along nice. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to put a roll out. Uh oh. I need to pick that up. Because I have a doggy. Dogs cannot have garlic, they cannot have raisins, they cannot have chocolate. Even the cheap stuff. Okay? Not the rollers are cheap. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that at all. Just this time of year, everybody's got candy, so be careful with the candy. Your dogs cannot have candy. But we're just going to put a rollo in the middle of each one of these. If anybody has wondered um, what this is on, on my refrigerator, so these are healing herbs. These are all the herbs that you could use for healing if you wanted to. They're from um, herbmentor.com, and uh, these are spices and herbs, the culinary uses, and the, the healing benefits uh, from the creative herbalist. And um, they have a free cookbook too that shows you uncommon remedies. And this right here is probably the most important thing I have on my refrigerator besides my grandchildren, <laughs> um, is uh, medications that you can and cannot give to your dogs or your cats. And it tells you what it is <clears throat> and um, what it treats, how you use it. And I'm not sure where I got that from, but if you'll just Google uh, medication charts for pets, you'll find it really easily. And I laminated them so that they don't get messed up. And then I put them on my fridge. Then I just have a handy dandy chart I can refer to if I need to. Especially in case of an emergency for the pets. It's always good to have that stuff on hand. You know, make a little uh, first aid kit too. You know, because they're just like little kids. You know, they get sick, they get hurt. You need stuff on hand for that. And just make sure that you know what you can and can't give them. And that's why that chart is really handy because you can give stuff to dogs you can't give to cats. It's like I had a little kitten. I don't mean to sound grim, but I had a little kitten that 
uh, someone had stayed at our house and over the holidays and she was a heart patient and I told her to be very careful with her medication because I had small children in the house at the time and um, but a week after New Year's and we came home and our little kitten had passed away and come to find out it had licked, licked a pill that she had accidentally dropped on the floor in the bedroom and would have been okay if the dog had scooped it up but the kitten just licked it and I, I guess it tasted nasty because he didn't chew it and that's all it took. So please be careful with your medication, know what you can and can't give to your dogs and your cats because they're like family. I know they are to me anyway. So you want to be extra, extra careful. Just like your children, you want to take as many precautions with your pets as you do with your children. So that's why I have that chart on my refrigerator. So I'm just trying to put these in here neatly and keep an eye on my little candy box over there. I'm actually going to um, like dribble chocolate on these after they're done. Now you see why I'm doing the stuff that takes the longest first. <laughs> Now, um, if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic, I would have invited um, several friends or family members over to help with us today. And I would have had everybody working on something. <laughs> I have to keep an eye on a couple of them, including myself, that like, have to test the product. Because you know, you have to test the product. You think one of these seven, one of these seven dozen isn't for me? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. I made extras. Somebody told me that um, I should have dehydrated the scraps from my marshmallows um, for chocolate bombs. And I thought, nah, I don't want to do that. And then somebody else said, uh, duh, make Rice Krispie Treats. <laughs> so that's what I did. I made Rice Krispie Treats and took them to work. And yes, I did eat a few of those. It's a miracle they made them to work. Because they were really good. But I did have a bag of marshmallows. I still have a few left. I did have a bag of marshmallows um, in the <laughs> pantry. And I thought, hmm, because somebody said, I'd like to make trail mix and uh, gorilla bars. And she said that she uses dehydrated marshmallows for her trail mix. So I have three trays of dehydrated marshmallows now <laughs> for trail mix and trail bars. Plus, um, I, I could add those to my chocolate bombs if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm going to save those. I did those in my pamper chef air fryer. Okay, so now we're going to put them into this oven. They're at 250 for three to five minutes until the rollers get soft. So um, my experience is it takes, it takes five minutes. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Just be careful you don't want to upset your little towers of yumminess.
get a hot pad out for that pan when it comes out. So if you would, in the comments, um, let me know what you make uh, for the holidays. Um, I would like to try, I think it's called Stolen sometime, because I like, I like breads. I like, I like that kind of stuff. I'd like to try that sometime, but I don't think I, right now, um, it's Sunday, Christmas is uh, Friday. So I think that's something I've got to kind of start ahead of time. So. Because I think you have to candy the fruit that you're going to use in it. If I remember when I was reading correctly. <laughs> I said the wrong one. <laughs> I'm going to get a drink right quick. I hope you don't mind. Okay, so those are cool by. What we're going to do next is we're going to mush a pecan. Maybe it's thick enough, it'll, it'll hold it on. No, we'll find out, I guess. Might have, I might end up fishing it out. <laughs> that won't be fun because it'll be hot. Oh, our candy melts are nice. I think there's a celebration brand from Walmart. Hey Google, can you restart our Christmas music? Nothing's playing right now. Hey Google, can you play some instrumental holiday music? Okay, check out this holiday instrumental music station on YouTube Music. So we're going to move this over here. Put this in the
everyone. Can you play some instrumental Christmas music, please? Alright, here's a YouTube music playlist called Solo Piano Christmas. <laughs> Just playing something good earlier. I kept going on pause. I do mine with the line sides up. I just nearly pushed them together when I took them out of the oven. Those look yummy. I'm gonna drizzle some chocolate on top. I always wish I could play piano. Never got a chance to learn. I guess I need to put that on my bucket list, huh? I think piano's so pretty. Violin too. Just don't think I'm that talented though. I used to play the organ. That's not like the piano. I think the first song I learned how to play was Silent Night. My grandma was real little. That's what she wanted me to learn. That and Adel, Adelweiss, Adelweiss. These are done. So we're going to go ahead and turn that off so that we can save some electricity. Electricity. Now I don't have solar. As much as I would like to, I do not have solar. I think if I'm ever able to buy a house again, definitely want to have solar. Yeah, to be perfect. 
stuff. I love to cook. I like to cook. Or maybe you just don't get into the kitchen and maybe getting into the kitchen will turn you into somebody who loves to cook. I've always liked to cook. Um, I know when I was a Girl Scout, we took a cooking class for a badge that we needed. And um, <clears throat> the chef taught us how to make toasted peaches for a, a dessert. Oh, so easy, so simple. Just um, some peach halves dipped in some butter and some lemon juice and tossed in some crushed cornflakes and baked in the oven for a few minutes. Probably 350 for like 10 minutes or something. It probably it wasn't very long. It was a really simple recipe. But oh my goodness. It was so good. It was so simple and so delicious. I should make that again. It was really good. Now I had a friend. I would go and stay with them every now and then when I was going to uh, Baptist school. I've been to Catholic school, Baptist school, and boarding school. Yeah, boarding school was a lot of fun, believe it or not. It was co ed, so it was a lot of fun. A little bitty town in Florida. Mockbird Academy. Great place. We had a pool, a uh, ski boat, a gym. Now, our old gym, we turned that into a roller rink because I like to roller skate. That's what I did all the time before I went to boarding school. So we turned our old gym into a roller rink. And that's where we did it. That's where the seniors held the uh, Halloween party that they sponsored. A ton of fun. Lots of fun. It was a costume party. Now, uh, when that school first started, it was... Uh, a day school and it was a dairy farm so the students could earn their tuition by working the dairy farm that's pretty cool I thought I'm trying to spread these out because I keep squishing them together So yeah, so we learned that uh, when we did a little project in our civics class. I don't know why we do that in civics class, but that's where we did it. On, uh, so we did a little history on the school. And we went, we, I guess we were learning how to research information. So we were researching the archives of the school and we found out that the school used to be a dairy farm. Which we all thought was pretty cool. I did it. This is a nice little school. It's, it's still still operation. It's still operating. We had kids uh, come from uh, Venezuela. Um, I went and spent um, Christmas. Um, in Venezuela in 1973 with my roommate and her sister and it was amazing beautiful beautiful place was then anyway and um, we did some some mountain mountain hiking and some shopping and hang out at the country club yeah they were wealthy so was my guardian but that's another long long story so, it was really neat because uh, when we got there, when we arrived in Caracas, uh, it was like um, some big movie star or big rock star or something had, had <laughs> arrived at the airport because there were thousands, I'm not kidding you, thousands of people all over the upper deck of the airport that were cheering and they had signs and balloons and they were all welcoming the students home from the not from the United States. It was incredible to watch. It was really neat. You know, welcome home like that when I got back. <laughs> but it was nice. It was really beautiful. Weather was amazing. 
Um, their back porch um, overlooked the city of Caracas, and in the background there's a mountain mountain range. And um, yeah, oh, it's beautiful. What a view! Weather was great. Nothing like the states. I mean, you know, really close to the equator there, so it was warm the whole time I was there. I don't think I think I wore a windbreaker once or twice. But other than that, yeah, we dressed up for Christmas and we dressed up formally for New Year's Eve, and <laughs> we did a fun tradition I, I passed on to my children, where um, on New Year's Eve at 10 seconds before midnight. During the countdown, you would stand in the chair, you'd have 10 grapes in one hand, a glass of champagne in the other. Yeah, you could drink at 13 in Venezuela back then. I don't know about now, but you could then. And um, so you would you would eat the grapes, chug the champagne, make a wish, and jump into the new year. If you could do all that before the clock struck midnight, your wish would come true. So we still do that. I even do it here. But, uh, yep. I put out a lemon pig. No, that's not crying. I put out a lemon pig for uh, good luck and prosperity. And it's the weirdest thing. It was something I learned on from Twitter on the Horse Whisperer. Um, somebody posted it a couple of years, years ago. It was early enough that I actually <laughs> got my car. Went to Walmart, bought a lemon, came home, and made a lemon pig. And I have made a lemon pig ever since because um, I was still in bankruptcy at the time, and the next couple of months were going to be <laughs> super financially difficult for me. So I thought, what the heck? I'm going to go ahead and do it. And you know, I don't know if it'll work for you the way it has worked for me, but I have never worried about money since. I do one every year. I mean, what's it hurt? All you gotta do is believe. And I believe in a lemon pig. Oh, I have a picture of it. It is so cute. Alrighty. So that's that's all those. So that's some extra pecans and some extra pretzels. Put this over here. I'm just going to put it out because I need to try things up. Worse than this cotton. You didn't get the band very really. Hurts the hands off. Gotta teach my son how to use the um, hand towels. <laughs> I thought, oh, he uses a lot of paper towels. I'm gonna keep him. Alright, so we're gonna let those cool for just a few minutes. So I'm gonna check and see how my um, candy melts are coming along. Nice. That's what we're gonna use to make our friendship cookies. Sure that. Looks like the candy melts are taking a little water, but I guess they're chocolate. One's white chocolate and one's uh, regular chocolate. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down to low now because I don't want to overdo it. This one's still on high. So while these are cooling, move this out of the way so I'll mess them up. Probably do a video for you guys on how I make my liqueurs. They're very, very popular. Some people 
say ranch. I don't know why. Who had this do? I guess a lot of people just do what they've learned as they grew up. to make for your holidays too. Um, maybe I'll try it. I'm always up for trying something new, you know that. I'm going to use these to make um, the coating for um, cake pops. That'll be fun. I like cake. I don't know anybody else, but I like cake. I'd rather have cake than pie any day. So, so, you know, I decorate cakes, and I haven't decorated a cake for a while now, probably um, July 4th, I experimented and made a cake that looked like a flag. Um, I haven't done anything really significant. So, I think that I'm going to make a snow globe cake for Christmas. So I will probably make that Christmas Eve. I'm going to show you what it looks like. You can see all my little tips and tricks about making cakes. Oh, 
Definitely chocolate, because I can smell the, the chocolate. The cocoa. So I live in South Carolina. It doesn't snow here. Not very much anyway. We got a little bit a couple years ago, but that was in January. Having a white Christmas for us is like a no. That's never gonna happen. So if you get to have a white Christmas, I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> but I grew up in Florida, so we never had a white Christmas. I don't think I've ever had a, well, yeah, I had a white Christmas in 2010, I think. Um, I got engaged that Christmas and it snowed when he took me home to meet his uh, family. And it started snowing on Christmas Eve, so we had a white Christmas. It was really nice. Somerville, Georgia. It's pretty. We went to uh, there's a war a war cemetery there that was was moving to see that in snow. Just, you know, something about visiting something like that at any time is just you know, moving. It's almost ready. It's almost, almost thin enough for me to pipe. It's going to be hot too. <laughs> it's going to be hot, cheap hot. Oh, it'll be worth it. Chocolate and another stir. Alright, so I'm going to do this Ziploc bag. And I'm going to need something to hold it for me. I'll oh, put the chocolate in there. Just gonna cut off a tiny, 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 tiny tip.
because it is not spreading very well at all. So I'm not going to do that one. I'm just going to do this here right there. It's making a mess. Those are ours right there to give away. 
So I'm melting this because I know this will work just fine.
But I have I have used this tool when I made like uh, Palm Joy bars and um, I dipped uh, peppermint patties with this too until I got an old to make them in. The idea behind not having too much product on the cookie is because it tends to, because it's hot, it pools at the bottom and then you have like a whole bunch of <laughs> junk at the bottom of your cookie. I love these. It's so good. This is another sweet, salty, crunchy cookie. It's easy to make. You don't have to heat up the oven. Up 
that they will have after they dry. That's why it's so much fun to do this with your family. And you can do this with your children. Just um, if they're younger, just you do the hot part, and then let them do the sprinkle part. They don't have to touch them to do the sprinkle part, so they wouldn't they wouldn't get burned. You gotta keep an eye on them though, because they'll eat them. <laughs> Shoot, you gotta keep an eye on me. I eat them. sprinkles on these cookies that you want to. They're your cookies. Do them however you want.
So I'm going to switch this time and I'm going to use the fork as my pusher and my little white candy tool. That's my dipper. Let us see. This is something new I'm trying today. But anyway, I like to make neighbor this, um, you know, just so they know, you know, there's people around that care about them, want them to know they're being thought of this time of year. Um, I made a blueberry, blueberry syrup one year, and you can actually make that from juice. You don't have to make it from whole berries. Um, I found that recipe at pickyourown.com. And uh, they show you how to make jelly from juice. It's really good. They're apple, apple, 
apple jelly recipe. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing. I had a uh, cinnamon and cloves, so it tastes like apple pie. Oops, I dropped one. So that one will be right there. And I'll have to go over. Um, I made apple butter one year, crock pot apple butter, and let me tell you something. <laughs> it smells so good. Um, it, they said that you could make it overnight in the crock pot. <laughs> Don't do that because you will wake up in the middle of the night starving <laughs> because that crock pot apple butter smells so good. So my suggestion is, is to get up early and start early. <laughs> it only takes about six hours anyway. <laughs> so yeah, don't make that before you go to bed like the recipe says that you can do because you will wake up hungry. I made that mistake with um, my West Bend bread maker. I mean, <laughs> there's some recipes that you can't start, uh, put on a delayed start because of the ingredients in it. <laughs> but apparently, pumpkin, pumpkin bread, you can't. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning starving and you don't know why you're so hungry until you realize that the whole house smells like pumpkin bread. You can do that with the uh, cinnamon oatmeal bread too. Yeah, unless you want to wake up in the middle of the night <laughs> hungry. Don't, yeah, just wake up early in the morning and do them early in the morning. But I, I was doing it because I wanted it ready. So I could take it to work with me. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, just make, just go ahead and make it the day before, <laughs> or make it the day up. What, what? Up? Yeah, no. Don't make it while you're sleeping because you will wake up hungry. <laughs> I guarantee. You. Now we move back to the sprinkles. Hey Google, did my music stop? To turn off the music, say stop playing music. No, no, can you go can you go back a couple of videos? Or show me my history? Playing back couple videos on YouTube. Hey Google. Can you show me my history? My YouTube history? You find or delete searches and other activity in the no, Google that's not right. or Cancel. Google account at myactivity.google.com. You can delete hey, Google. history. Can you show me my YouTube history, please? We're trying to listen to music here. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. Here are other things you can try. Hey, Google. Can you play instrumental Christmas music, please? Okay, here's a YouTube music playlist called Solo Piano Christmas. <laughs> I can't figure out how to make her go back to the one she was playing when we first started this video. Because it was really good. It's a lot of instrumental piano. It was nice.